Hey hackers, this Hacker Noon episode is sponsored by Bybit, the crypto trading platform that takes buying, selling, earning, and trading crypto to the next level. So visit bybit.com to learn more. Hacker Noon podcast. Oh, uh, hey, Andrew. Uh, hmm? This is a safe space, right? Like, it's just the two of us here. Nobody else is going to listen to this, right? So I can <laughs> ask all my dumb questions right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Just you and me. Oh, awesome. Great. All right. Well, anyways, I, of course, am your host, Amy Tom, and this is the Hacker Noon Podcast. Joining me today, as I have just alluded to, is Andrew Levine from Coinos Group. Thank you very much for joining me today. I have a lot of dumb questions about Ethereum for you today, uh, because what even is Ethereum? What does it do? Why did it become popular? Who started this? So let's get right into it. Tell me what your best working definition is of what Ethereum is. Oh, wow. Um, well, that's a great question. And before we get started, I, if it makes you feel better, the way I've acquired all of my knowledge is almost entirely by asking stupid questions to okay, my engineer friends. Uh, who perfect, I work perfect. with and who I'm, who we're, who I'm building Coinos with, but I'm the marketing guy. I'm the CEO. You know, uh, I ask the stupid questions, and oftentimes some of our best ideas, in my opinion, come out of those stupid questions. So don't don't perfect. be afraid to ask stupid questions. Um, <laughs> what's what we think is most important? Our mission is actually to make to accelerate decentralization through accessibility. We think it's all, mm -hmm. we're all about accessibility, making this information accessible, making this technology accessible. And there, there's no reason that, you know, intelligent people like yourself should find this technology uh, inaccessible other than a failing on our part as the technologists to explain it. So I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to have this conversation with you. Great. Now, <laughs> now Ethereum. Yeah. About Ethereum. Uh, I, I think it's it's really helpful, like I, as, a, as I said last time, right, to take a step back and look at the big picture and understand where this thing falls in the, the arc of history. Um, yes. and, and you really can't understand Ethereum without first understanding Bitcoin and mm -hmm. how Bitcoin delivered this blockchain, this database that can store money. And that's really what Bitcoin was designed and engineered to do and to do well. For the first time in history, we wanted to wait, the, 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 you know, the ge generic week, uh, yeah. not Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, <laughs> not that anyone would conf confuse Whoa, me. what a plot twist. <laughs> you heard it yeah, here right. first on Hacking Game. No? <laughs> yeah, um, what, what Satoshi was trying to do was for the first time in history, deliver money without a centralized entity. No yep. private party, no individual group or institution like a central bank. And they did that. They did that for the first time in history. They, they combined technology with economics to deliver Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And so Bitcoin is a database designed to store Bitcoins. That's mm -hmm. it. The realization that Vitalik Buterin, the inventor of Ethereum had, um, he probably wasn't the only one to start realizing this. Actually, I think a lot of people, as Bitcoin emerged and grew in popularity and our understanding of the technology um, broadened and deepened, because this is something people don't understand. When, when, when a technology emerges, even the people who created it really don't necessarily understand it as well as people might imagine. We create things, we play with things and we create them and we think we have an idea of what they are, but very often we, we didn't really know what we were doing. We were just playing around and now it exists and now we're learning about it as we play with it. And so mm -hmm. as this process was, was happening, a lot of us were thinking, you know what? It's not about this token. Bitcoin is cool. It's money. 
but it's this blockchain thing. It's this database that that database structure is the only genuine technological innovation within Bitcoin because everything mm -hmm. else existed beforehand. Mm -hmm. He assembled all these pre-existing technologies and tools into a new thing called the blockchain. And that blockchain was so powerful that it could store money and Bitcoin uses it for that. But what okay. if we could use it for other things? And after Bitcoin, a lot of projects came along. They copied Bitcoin and they tweaked it and they changed it so that you could use it for something else. And mm -hmm. Vitalik had a brilliant insight. Vitalik is objectively a genius. Um, nobody who's ever met him or knew him or read his work would argue that point. He's brilliant. And what he saw was that all these people were trying to use the blockchain to do other things, but they were doing it in a very inefficient way. They were copying Bitcoin, tweaking the Bitcoin code and launching something that wasn't Bitcoin, that wasn't connected mm -hmm. to Bitcoin. And he yeah. said, well, what if we just took the blockchain and then allowed people to write code on it? And that would enable them to use the blockchain to do anything that code can do, meaning all mm. of these applications that we use, all the stuff we do on computers is now mm -hmm. stuff we can integrate a blockchain into and a very, <laughs> and, and, and to go to the most obvious use case for this is that now you could program that blockchain to not just have one currency like Ethereum, but mm -hmm. you could program it to have an infinite variety of new cryptocurrencies. And that's what these ERC-20 mm. tokens are. Um, not only that, you can program it to have NFTs, non-fungible mm -hmm. tokens, something that's different from cryptocurrencies and an infinitely growing variety of use cases. Okay. So at the end of the day, Ethereum is both a blockchain and a token, right? Yes. Yeah, so it has tokens on it. I think the best way to think about it, and you can let this mull in the back of your mind because it's admittedly a bit complex. Um, mm -hmm. Bitcoin is an application. It is mm -hmm. a type of money. Ethereum is a decentralized computer. Mm. It runs computations. It is a computer. And one of the things you can program that computer to do is store tokens, tokens like mm -hmm. Bitcoins, tokens like mm -hmm. Ether, which is the native currency. And in Ethereum, Ether is used in a similar fashion to how Bitcoin is used in Bitcoin meaning that in order to use the protocol and in order to build the blockchain and earn rewards, uh, you are incentivized with this native currency. And when you wanna do stuff on both Bitcoin and Ethereum, when you wanna use the network, it, you have to pay a fee and the fee is in the native currency. Um, <clears throat> what you do, on those networks is what's so different. On Bitcoin, the only thing you do, the only thing it makes sense to do is send and receive Bitcoins. Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. or Bitcoin. Right. On Ethereum, mm -hmm. there's just more you can do. You can run code. But mm -hmm. if you want to run that code, it's still the fun, it's, it's same, it's still the same underlying mechanism. You pay a fee, the code runs, and you get your output, but you get to run a program, which is not something you can really do on Bitcoin. You can, it's hard, it doesn't make much sense. Okay, okay. So Ethereum is the computer behind the blockchain projects. You have to pay a fee to use Ethereum with the ETH that you buy. That's what it is, right? Yeah, so sorry, just, just to go back a little bit, the easiest, it, it's important looking at the big picture to remember mm -hmm. what we're all trying to do here, which mm -hmm. is power decentralized solutions. 
mm -hmm. decentralized networks, peer to peer networks of people all over the world working together to solve some problem. It's, a, it's about decentralization. Bitcoin is a decentralized cryptocurrency. That's it. it, it uh, sorry, did I say Bitcoin or Ethereum? You said Bitcoin. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> Perfect. Bitcoin is a decentralized currency. Okay. Ethereum is a decentralized computer mm -hmm. with a decentralized currency that is what you use, what, what you pay to use the network. Okay, got it. But the Ethereum computer is not solely to buy and sell, uh, buy and receive cryptocurrencies. It is can be used for multiple different blockchain projects because you can add your code on top of it. Yes, and the term we use for this is that it's a pla it, it's a platform that you can use to release decentralized applications. So computers okay. are things that you use to yep. run applications. Yep. Um, decentralized computers are what you use to run decentralized applications. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it, got it. So would you, so Ethereum essentially was the first blockchain or no, uh, blockchain Bitcoin project. was the first. Sorry, project for coding, so for launching your blockchain projects. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Um, so Bitcoin was the first blockchain and mm -hmm. Ethereum was the first general purpose. Platform blockchain. to, okay, right, got it. No, no, okay. no, sorry, sorry. It's using the oh, terms general that purpose are used. blockchain, yes, okay, got general it. General purpose blockchain. So then why might people not, like why did other blockchains coming to existence? What was it about Ethereum that needed more blockchains to start popping up? Well, there's a few things that aren't great about Ethereum, many of which trace back to the fact that it's just old, that it was the first. So they had to build a lot of stuff themselves. They had to build their programming language themselves. They had to bring their, build their virtual machine themselves. But I think the truth of the matter is that all that stuff's kind of BS. And the mm. reason why all these other projects come along is because the fees on Ethereum always become quite high. Mm. And so by launching a fresh new blockchain, you can offer lower fees and right. ac acquire market share and acquire users. But ultimately, those fees, if you are successful, those fees become high too. Those fees become expensive mm. too. And so mm -hmm. that's why with Coinos, what we're delivering to the market is the first general purpose blockchain that is truly fee-less. Uh, mm. You don't have to pay fees to use it at all. We think that having fees is a perfectly useful uh, approach to mm -hmm. general purpose blockchains. And mm -hmm. we, but we, based on our experience working with developers, we believe that it is important to have an alternative to that mm -hmm. fee-based model. And that's what, that's what we're trying to bring to market with Coinos. Okay. Makes sense. All right. I think I understand Ethereum now that the general perfect you get it hundred percent general purpose blockchain. We've got it. I'm I am a crypto master now. Four yes, episodes you are. in and I'm just killing it. All right. Yes, you are. Great job. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew, for joining me on the Hacker Noon podcast. If our listeners want to find you and what you're working on, where can they look? Yeah, so you can learn more about the Coinos blockchain by going to coinos.io. Our, our company is Coinos Group. You can learn about us and uh, schedule a consultation with us by going to coinos.group. And you can follow me on Twitter at Andrarchy. All right, great. Thanks for tuning in, hackers. I hope you learned as much about Ethereum as I did. I will see you in next week. Stay weird and I'll see you on the internet. Bye-bye. Afternoon podcast.